my bigger thing is if anyone if anyone is like if anyone uh, accused me of having sex with them, I'd be like, no, I fucking didn't. Shut up. <laughs> Brunch. Hit it, boys. All right, we don't do this ever. This is going to be the first time we've done this. Um, brunch is all about agreeing with each other. And if it's ever about anything else, that's when we both walk away. Uh, you're a little mad at me. I'm a little mad at you. I'm a little yeah. mad back at you. Oh, Go yeah? Ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be a little airing of grievances. Okay. Uh, we didn't have an episode on Friday because uh, you overslept. Mm-hmm. What time were we supposed to record on Friday morning? Like We were supposed to record, I think, it like... Eight or nine? Yeah, something around there. Yeah. And it wasn't until like two hours later mm. that I got a text from you and you're like, oh shit, sorry, overslept. And I had a very small window in which I could record. No, uh, no it wasn't two hours later. It was like an hour later. Or maybe it was an hour. It was you, definitely at least an hour. You texted me between 15 and 45 minutes after we were supposed to record saying that you went to the gym. And when I it got was that, not 15 I was, to 40 minutes. I, texted I you, was perturbed. That that's how short a window I had. No, I gave you at least like forty five minutes. You may have. Yeah. Okay. Because, in the, but the, the reason the window was so short was because you've done that before. Probably. Yes. And yeah. so I was like, I know that he's asleep. Yeah. If he's not responding, I know that he's asleep. He overslept. He's done that before. But the only other time I've done it before, and again, I'm not making any excuses. There's nothing I care about more in the world in this podcast. The only other time I did that was when it was the day after the worst day of my life, and I was literally just in bed drinking all day, and I fell asleep. And I don't know if you guys ever do that. That's going to happen. The booze is going to get you. You're going to fall asleep. I, it's okay. I took like a month off after that. Um, all right. This is going to sound like an excuse. It is. The last two weeks, I've been trying to... I didn't want to bring it up here because um, I'm kind of weirded out by it. Uh, I have had some sort of skin thing, which is fucking crazy. And I could. I, I can never sleep because of it. And all the, the remedies for it... I've gone to the doctors about it and... Uh, it's probably a winter thing, but it also might be a stress thing. I am itchy 100 fucking percent of the time, and anything that would make the itching go away, I'm allergic to. Really? So there's nothing I can fucking do. So all I've been doing for like two weeks has been taking Benadryl, and I fucking quit drinking coffee, so I'm taking Benadryl and trying to drink tea to even it out. And when you got that, oh, fuck, I overslept, if it sounded casual, it's because it was like the 60th one of those text messages I'd sent to people in that week. I canceled plans going out. I fucking slept through spin classes. Spin classes that I paid for. I don't always pay for spin classes, I'll be completely honest. But when I pay for them, if I miss them, it's fucking heartbreaking. I left a fucking front row seat open in the Saturday spin class. And then... What do you think's worse? You being mad at me or the fucking handlebar tweeting like, oh, I guess DJ had something better to do when he misses. I don't know. What is worse for you? Because those Uh, those seem like the two worst things that could happen to you. They're the only fucking two (laughs) things I do. Uh, So um, I've stopped taking the Benadryl. And then last night I was up till fucking 630. I was, you know what I was doing last night? Itching? I was itching and talking to your girlfriend all night. What? Yeah. Why? She was up. She's also sick. And uh, I don't she, like that. She responded <laughs> to a story. No, I responded to her story early in the day. And then I was up. I was like, what am I going to fucking do? I'm itching. I'm watching High Maintenance. I'm watching uh, fucking. Uh, I didn't watch The Shy, but I watched Crashing, which was excellent. And I get an alert on my phone. And I was like, ooh, getting that 3.30 alert. But again, I'm so fucking itchy that if that was a booty call from somebody, I was going to be like, <laughs> sorry, I can't. No, sorry, I can't do that. Um, but I was going to have to be fucking vague about it. But uh, yeah, so I've not been taking uh, Nike, uh, fucking, uh, oh, I almost killed myself with NyQuil. I went to the doctor about it and they were like, what's wrong? I was like, I keep bitching. Nothing's fixing it. And my heart hurts now. And they were like, well, what have you eaten lately? I'm like, nothing. I've been doing fucking paleo, all healthy. Although last night I cheated on it the first time I drank like half a bottle of NyQuil. 
And they were like, yeah, well, you almost fucking killed yourself. That's why your heart hurts, you idiot. Uh, so that's not an excuse because, honestly, I think that without that, at some point, that would have happened anyway. I would have been late. Because yeah. punctualness with – unfortunately, with brunch has been the number one thing that I've had to either reschedule yeah. or cut it fast and loose It has with, not been with, great. Which sucks. And, and I – apparently, there was a miscommunication where you did not know where that was like – the one thing that bothers me that you know that you know me, you've known me for a while. Yeah, there's not a lot of things that I get mad about. You but s- when I feel like somebody's wasting my time or being inconsiderate with my mm-hmm. time, I get very mad. You sent me a text message this morning that when you sent it, it was the meanest text I that I've felt- ever sent to you. It wasn't mean. Well, it was like the sassiest. It was you. You told me off. Yeah. And when you sent it, I was so flummoxed because. A, I was deciding whether or not to put honey in my tea because I've been drinking. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were going to put a honey in your text. Then I would have lost it. Oh, I was because, listen, honey. Because, because one thing, because I get very mad when That's people something are I incon- do sometimes. When people not are, to you, but when people are inconsiderate with my time, I get very mad. But what happened? What has happened with you? And it's kind of doubled down on it. You are very quick to downplay it. Yeah, well, you try you try to de-escalate the situation yeah. when you sense that I'm a little ticked off, yeah. and it only makes me matter. <laughs> so I didn't. So as I was saying, this all started because you texted this morning. Um, the, uh, so I said, "Let's do it." It's seven thirty, which uh, I worked. I got home from work at one o'clock last night. Not an excuse, just laying out the facts. Um, and then the fucking itching saga, which again, I was leaving you out of that because honestly, and I said this to your girlfriend last night. Being a skin survivor is your thing, yes, and I don't want to fucking take that away from you. So I was fuck. I'm fucking fighting my own battle over here. You have like you have an invisible skin disease. Yes, like I, yeah, I, the, I can't look killer. You, yes, I can't look at you and be like, oh, bad skin. Yeah, when you, I, I had the the loud skin disease, and then we debated. We were like, so how bad do you think Pete's skin was? And we both agreed, like, probably not bad. It was bad. Not in like a not in like a you're making too big a deal of it. I'm saying like, I, I bet as soon as you noticed it, you were like. All right, how do we like? You sat down. You're like, all right, let's devise a plan. Like you didn't, you didn't let it beat you, right? Or like you, you weren't gonna let it beat you. I wasn't going to let it beat yeah. me, but it it, it it got the best of me it for a little a while. Rounds. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what was I saying? Um. So, yeah, I my plan was seven thirty this morning. Uh, we would record, and then because I fucking. Missed that spin class the other day. I was going to do a 9 o'clock boxing class. When it was 4.30, 5.30, when it was 6.20 was the last time I saw the clock. When it was 6.20, I was like, there's no way I'm recording or that I'm going to go to a boxing class on, like, no sleep. I'll fucking pass out. I'll pass out, like, walking into a boxing class anyway. So I was like, I texted you and I was like, hey, uh, don't worry. Uh like, we'll record at, what did I say, 8.30? Yeah. And at 8.35, you were like, where are you? Yes. And I was like, just hopping in the shower. Now, depending on traffic, I'm usually 8 to 15 minutes away from you. Mm-hmm. And so I got out of the shower, and then as I was getting out of the shower, got a phone call from work, and just like, I, I was just like casual. I was slowly moving about my day, like somebody who had fucking slept for a second and and thought incorrectly that uh, there wasn't any rush. So then at like 8.45, you were like, where are you? And I think I said, what's your problem, man? Yeah, you're like, what's your problem? Because I couldn't tell if you were serious. I, like, we'll say a lot of things. We'll be like, hey, hey, you, you stupid asshole who I don't like. What's up? <laughs> and it's like always a, a joke. So when you were like, where the fuck are you? I, I thought, didn't say where the fuck are you. I was, yeah. I was, I was giving you the benefit of the doubt. Pers- it was like a, it was two where are you in like a short time. Right, because we're coming off an episode in which we missed because yes. you were late. Yes. <laughs> and so I was I was like, all right, this is the one episode where he's not going to be late. Or oh, not the yeah. Not the one episode. That's, this that's, was that's for a little sure. sassy. Yeah. But like the, I told, and I said last night when you when you suggested that we should record in the morning, mm-hmm. I said, you're on morning you podcast probation and because you tend to be later in the morning, which is understandable. In my head, I was like, well, little does Pete know, I'm not taking Benadryl tonight, so we're all good. But I drank, again, not to make excuses, uh, I knew that yesterday I had to work from... Like 10 
to you, you're doing 12, the whole like, not to make excuses and then you're listing off excuses. <laughs> when has anybody ever said I not know. to make excuses and uh, then not followed it with an excuse? But here's the thing. The number one here's trick the in the thing. book. I, I'm fine with you. If I'm fine with you saying 8:30 and then us recording at 9:30, as yeah. long as you say, "Hey, it's going to be closer to 9:30," yeah. because then at that point I can say, "Okay, I'm not going to sit around waiting for DJ and expecting him to show up momentarily for an hour." Yes, that's very fair. But whenever I show up, you're in fucking sleepy wear. So I legitimately thought, I legitimately thought that when I show up. You get. I text you and say I'm here. You then get out of bed and we go. I, I usually do do that. And yeah. if you showed up at eight thirty today, that would have been what ah, happened. <laughs> so, so I rolled out of bed and then I sat around for an hour. Again, this is all fair. But uh, so in this text conversation, you said like, "Dude, stop doing this. You know that. Uh, you know that I don't like when people waste my time. And you, and you, you, you conveyed to me like." You know that this upsets me. Why do you still do it? Yeah, and so I said I legitimately had no idea it upset yeah, you. Yeah, which is wild to me because it's yeah. like you never see me mad, and this is the only time that I get mad. Yeah, but I, I, I haven't been like vocal about it. I've been trying to give you right. the benefit of the doubt. Everybody knows that in this podcast right. we like each other. Yeah, and, and I try, and it's gotten to the point where now it's like it, it's bothered me. But it I happened so much that it bothers. Okay, me. so I also brought up this morning. I was like, well. I had just sensed recently that you were, like, mad at me, annoyed with me, something, and I didn't know what it was. I thought it was just, like, a general, like, when you work with someone for three years, maybe uh, you have a rough month yeah, or something. Yeah, that happens. And, like... There's just... There, I mean, like, that happens and, like, no uh, matter what. It's it's the Brady Belichick thing. Right. You can't, you can't work with somebody for so long without, like, having something that gets under your skin a little bit. Right, right, right. But, uh... I don't know. It it freaked me out. For anybody little... listening, like, yeah. there's this isn't much trouble in paradise. We're gonna be no, fine. no. This is actually honestly the first sign of it. So I think that at first I was like, when you brought it up, I was like, no, I don't want to talk about because you, you were like, we should quickly just explain like why we're mad and then go from there. And I was like, no, because my biggest fucking fear in the world would be one of us would say something mean. <laughs> And then biggest we've fear never the said wor- something mean to each other. Biggest fear in the world is that the listeners don't think that we're completely in love. Yeah, which I, I, I'm not fucking going anywhere, man. <laughs> you can. I'm gonna do the thing. Like this will end with one of us challenging the other one to quit because <laughs> they, like I'm not gonna be the fucking one who leaves brunch again. And I think I responded to you. I was like, dude, I've sensed some <laughs> shit of late, and people have fucking tweeted about it, which freaked me out even more you know the thing they say like by the time uh you notice uh you need a haircut everybody else has noticed it have people noticed i've been angry when you tweet when you tweeted this more uh on uh, friday sorry no episode today one of us overslept and the other one's not happy about it and that was someone responded like i can trace back that it's dj who overslept (laughs) because dj wouldn't send this tweet (laughs) he would uh yeah so that was like a that was like a 50 percent passive aggressive uh shot at you but also 50 percent. i just wanted to kind of gauge the room and see like what people thought yeah who people thought that that would would do that yeah and it was closer than i expected a lot it was like almost 50 50 i think towards the end it was more like 60 40 how the fuck did they not pick the depressed guy for who was sleeping in this situation yeah, fuck whatever. I don't want to harp on this for too for too much longer. Yeah, that w- I mean, th- this is so honestly one of the reasons I was very eager to leave my last job was because this thing that we just did add in means stuff, and that's what a lot of Weei's programming is. Oh yeah, it's and, like ninety percent of it. And God, they're fucking killing it, and it's <laughs> captivating. And I fucking listen to and it. They're all not the even. Time. They're not even mean. Right. They're nasty. Yeah, <laughs> and they. Uh, I was gonna say, and they like each other a lot less than we like each other. So I, I don't know. Like, I think I got like a little triggered, a little. Sh- I mean, I got ca- when a I was PTSD. At, yes, when I was at at EEI, um, sports fans, pff, fucking losers. If any sports fans listen to this, sports <laughs> fans will remember uh, Kirk Minahan and I had a falling out, and I was adamant the whole time. I was like, I am not mad at this person. We are fucking fine. We're friends. This is what Kirk does. God bless him. He kills it do- doing it. And I got called into the program director's office. You have to fight. Being like, 
why aren't you fighting? Wow. And I was like, because I'm fucking... I was Because I'm an adult. I, no, no, I was like... It's weird because I can't be like, because I'm the happy guy, because I am not the happy no. guy, but I'm the... Uh, you're the I don't take this too seriously guy. Because how the fuck could you? I know. Uh, so that that fucking upset me, and I that I, that wasn't why I left EEI. Uh, money was a big <laughs> reason. Uh, I fucking I completely love everything that I do right now. I'm way too busy, I think. But fortunately, I don't have a social life. Like. Mm. I don't know. I don't know how it got to that, but like I've I I went from a place where like negativity and snippiness was encouraged. So the few times over the last like I don't know, couple months that I've felt we've started to maybe be a little combative, I've been like fuck. This is <laughs> the worst thing in the world because the best thing about brunch is that we legitimately agree on everything we were texting the other day you were like new timberlake song heat and i listened to supplies and i was so upset because i was like f- not like here we go again but i was like like fuck i really don't like this are we, song. Gro- are we growing apart <laughs> yeah and i text i was like i fucking hate this and you were like fuck i like it i'm a fan and I was like, I think so you're, have a good you're weekend, gonna you're I guess. gonna you're gonna come around on it. Um, so now that the uh, now that the Patriots are going to the Super Bowl, shocker. Yeah. Uh, when are you when are you going to Minneapolis? Su- Saturday, Sunday to Saturday. That makes me feel a little bit better because uh, on Friday mm-hmm. my day turned around quickly after uh, after. Uh, well, you went to the, the gym brunch. at nine oh one, so you must have felt good about it. <laughs> I gave you a got window. those endorphins going. I gave going. you a window. Hey, no, uh, I get it. On to the next. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, as soon as I got to the gym, I got a phone call, and it was uh, the Boston Bruins. And this is unbelievable. <laughs> and so, uh, so what happened was I was supposed to go to the the All Star game, the NHL All Star game for CBS. And at like the last second, they were like, "Ah, sorry, we're not going to send you anymore. Uh, it's just probably not worth it." And I was like, mm-hmm, "Something." But it okay. sucks <laughs> when jobs say that because they're that's always right. I know. <laughs> I was like, like "You should never send me yeah, anywhere." Yeah, I, I was like, "Fuck." Uh, they so, found out. So, like two days after that, I saw the Bruins tweet like, "Hey, last chance for our All Star giveaway <laughs> on Twitter," and I was like, "You know what?" I'm not going th- through work, so I might as well just give this a shot. Applied. Next morning, they called me. They're like, hey, you won. You got it. You won a fucking all-expenses-paid trip to uh, go to the All-Star game in Tampa. Which is, it's in Tampa, and a lot of people don't know this. Tampa fucking rules. Tampa's amazing. I've never been, but I'm now very excited. And, oh, you're uh, going to rip it up so there. So it's two tickets, uh, airfare and hotel, and I was like, for a second, I was like, should I ask DJ? Yeah, I know DJ loves Tampa, and I was like, "No, nah, I'm fucking mad at DJ." Yeah, well, so that's a th- that should be like a seminal moment for brunch, a trip. I you know, and when you won it, I didn't think that you would invite me, okay. and not not like a, I bet he's not going to invite me, but just like we're in a, a weird place where if one of us happened into a trip, they they might ask like a, a gal pal or a, a different friend. Yeah, I asked a different friend. Uh, <laughs> Fucking hurts. I <laughs> you know what's a different like friend a gr- actually hurts. Even a girl. It was yeah, like, uh, it was like my second string a friend. Gr- because like I, I technically can't give you sex. Yes, I mean so, technically you could, but I honestly I can't. Not interested. No and offense. I actually I discussed this with a uh, a gal pal and her best friend. Just like it was like a weird thing like where i was just honestly saying it and then i was like oh fuck now like i need to reel this fucking back <laughs> and i was i was like yeah i don't understand why anybody would ever say like they wouldn't do something you know like cuz we right. we were talking about how gay i am and uh i was like i've i've never been compelled to like have sex with a guy but I'm not gonna Can't like, say for sure. Wh- why I would I ever say that I never will? Like I, I don't want to, but I don't want to say that I never will. You don't want to take it completely off the table. Like, yeah, you, you just want if you want it, it's it's there. Yeah, and there was so. uh, th- th- they're under understanding ladies, <laughs> but I was like, what 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 am I saying here? 
Shut up, DJ. Uh, yeah, so I asked my buddy. But now I feel a little bit better knowing that you couldn't go anyway, even if I did ask. Oh, it's... It's Sunday. This sucks because uh, I've uh, I've got to do a lot of shit on Saturday. I've, uh, I'm getting my hair cut Saturday. Um, <laughs> I'm going to Minneapolis Sunday. And Sunday is the fucking Grammys. Oh, that's right. But you know what? I think I'm boycotting the Grammys this year Ooh. because uh, I forget which reason why. It was my, a bad year for music. My sister. It was a bad year for music. My sister told me about this. I didn't look it up. Apparently, uh, Taylor's not going to the Grammys because Look What You Made Me Do didn't give en- get enough love. Uh, I love Look What You Made Me Do. I am all for a Jack Antonoff project not getting lo- enough love. <laughs> Lord is not going for some reason. And Lord, I... You know what I have said on this podcast about pure heroin. Yeah. And what I have said on this podcast about Royals. Lord, you were the yes. fucking most important artist on the planet. You I don't know, but I don't know if she was ever the most important artist well, on the planet. Well, Taylor but, and Kanye will yeah. always be. Um, but because she they was get the most ears. But she was for sure big enough that like her skipping the Grammys would be a big deal. Now Lord skipping the Grammys is like, oh, fuck it, whatever. You I don't care. You skipped the Grammys after putting out a fucking Mediocre. homogenous album and i get i get pissed more and more every day i think about that uh the the person who writes for the ringer who turns every story into a story about dr luke and who's obsessed with dr luke uh and wrote the thing about how jack antonoff is the answer for dr luke and how max martin and dr luke are okay but they've homogenized pop music that's why fucking jack antonoff is so great Oh, I mean, that makes me so mad. Every Jack Antonoff song sounds the fucking same. He was slowly fucking conditioning us to want to hear uh, Getaway Car when it came out. And we all, my fucking self included, we all fucking fell for it. If we, if they gave out Grammys for most disappointing artists of the year, yeah. I would have to be, it would be a two-man race between Lord and Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Well, 2017, not 20, uh, we've talked about this, the 2013 uh Lady rockers were fucking massive with their debuts, Churches, Hyam, and uh, and Lord. And like, think about it. All three of those were fucking groundbreaking. And Churches was the only one that, when you listened on the first listen, you were like, "Oh my god, what?" Th- that first album was a fucking eight, and I didn't even th- that that was them at eighty percent, and I didn't fucking know it. And Lord fucking way took the fucking pedal off the metal and i'm so i'm so i'm so fucking upset about that but uh what is it pedal to the metal what does that mean the, the floor is metal uh unless it's about, would, like disassembling uh, the car <laughs> was like, there's, there's no metal floor of a car it seems like i mean at, at its root it's metal but there's stuff on top of there's that. rubber yeah. and stuff over I, I do pretty well so i drive a sonata <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh uh, my favorite tweet recently was somebody tweeting at us uh, that the Guzzler, there was like a truck that had Guzzler on the yeah. side, and it was like, ha, car boys. <laughs> I love when people, t- somebody asked if they can borrow one of my Tatum jerseys, and they can. Just, this is fucking, like, I guess, come to. Yeah, I wouldn't let anybody borrow my clothes. Come to, to my. Nobody would fit my clothes anyway. Well, here, uh, here's something that people don't know. Um, I have four Tatum jerseys. Three of them are like the fifteen dollar uh, Chinese ones. You put me up on game mm-hmm. the website where you get those. Although uh, I'm working on uh, making a custom Tatum jersey, that's very exciting. Okay, uh, I asked uh, Ryan if he'd be able to make it. I'll tell you about it after. Okay, and it's going to be a fucking hit with the uh, with NBA Twitter. Ooh, yeah, mm-hmm. it's very I think better than Fultz. Think, no. I'll just fucking say it. On the front, Celtics zero. On the back, he's only, and then number nineteen. Oh my god! Have you that noticed is... how that how big a thing that's become? Jason yeah. Tatum is only nineteen. Oh yeah, but the shelf life on that jersey is not going to be great. He turns twenty in March, <laughs> so really not great. Rush order. Yes. Um, but I'm just going to wear that forever. Uh, I was at the game last week against the uh, who is it against? Oh, the fucking Pelicans. The Pelicans, every time I watch them play, I forget that they should be really, really good. Yeah. They should be so hard to play. They have, like, the two nasty like, big good men. big yeah. guys. Uh, so Tatum, I forget 
Someone crossed him up, and he literally slid like a foot. Oh, I did and see that. I saw that. Butt. Yeah. And I was and so he, and then drained. Fucking, right, yeah, Drain right. Shot. He came back, but yeah. it was so upsetting. And I was like, I was watching the game with my cousin, and I was like, if I see this fucking thing, if Worldwide Wob tweets this fucking <laughs> video, I'm gonna kill him. And he did. And all the responses were like, "Wow, crossed up like that at only 19." <laughs> Uh, that's awesome kills me but uh, uh let yeah. me tell you a story mm-hmm. uh i bought some contacts this weekend nice yeah and you know what I happened you're gonna say you bought some con tums <laughs> i was gonna <laughs> nope <laughs> no thanks uh i bought some con- i bought some <laughs> Hold contacts. On that receipt <laughs> yeah i bought some contacts this weekend uh and i did it right from my couch <gasps> in under five minutes really yes and i did it on my phone how amazing with is that? my bookie no, not my bookie. Uh, an awesome new app called Simple Contacts. Ooh. Uh, Simple, Simple, conta- ja- Simple Contacts. Simple Contacts. Stupid ass contacts. <laughs> Simple Contacts. Like, so you renew your prescription and reorder your brand of lenses from anywhere in minutes through an online vision test. It's designed by doctors, and every test is reviewed by a doctor. So they literally bring the doc- doctor's office to you. That's ridiculous. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> They're bringing it to you. That is, who the fuck are we to have the come doctor to us. brought to you us? Went, you went to years of medical right, yeah. school. You come to me. No, you, you took like a $900,000 <laughs> yes. risk. You come to me. Uh, the contact lens prices are unbeatable. They're fantastic. Do you know how expensive contacts are? I have no idea. They're kind of expensive. It's like $20 a box. Hmm. But not at Simple Contacts. They're cheaper. Uh, and the vision test is only $20, and shipping is free. Best of all, our listeners get $30 off their first Simple Contacts $30? purchase. $30? Yeah, 30 bucks. So that's a, that's a steal. They're normally expensive. You know Not what else? anymore. You know what else is a steal? What? Fixing your posture. You might think that in your old age, it's too late. Have scoliosis as a kid, never get checked, or just get tired at the gym. Back pain is no issue. It is no is, this an is issue. not part of the uh, I, uh, I, I think I just fucking stink at podcasts <laughs> now. To get thirty dollars off your first simple contacts order, use promo <laughs> you code. Done? No, I didn't even give the promo code. Uh, the promo code is PDC one hundred SC. That's PDC one hundred SC, and you get thirty dollars off your first your first simple contacts order. I don't like that promo code. It's a little it's a little uh, tricky. PDC 100 SC. Uh, try it for yourself. Save thirty dollars on your contact lenses by going to simplecontacts.com slash PDC 100 SC and enter the code at checkout. Hey. That's simplecontacts.com slash PDC 100 SC and enter code PDC 100 SC at the checkout. Hey, f- first before you do that, uh, try brunch. We're gonna we'll, we're gonna send an email see if they can also add in yeah. brunch there. Because yeah, do a uh, do brunch initially, and then if it doesn't work, then use PDC 100 SC because that's a little, you really it's a little too brunch, tricky. Wait a couple hours. <laughs> we'll, we we've had promo codes changed before. So. We're the worst fucking like read oh, yeah. people because they say, "Hey, uh, this this person is interested in uh, in uh, advertising with you. What do you guys think?" And then we take like two days to get back to them, and we're like, "Well, what's the promo code going to be?" It's like the promo code's going to be, they're going to give you fucking money. Just do what they say. And then they give it to us, and we're like, hey, what if we read their copy in a silly voice? What if we never fucking say my bookie? What if we always fucking call it the wrong thing? I think that my bookie and I have a good relationship, though. Oh, so I'm bummed that you're not coming to Minneapolis. I was also going to jokingly suggest this, but I couldn't really do it because I think I'd get fired. I was going to be like, yo, just fucking fly to Minneapolis and hide in my room because there's something that's going to be in Minneapolis that I'm going to try to do something with, and it's up both of our alleys, and it won't feel the fucking same doing it without you. Is it the Imagine Dragons? Imagine Dragons are Imagine there. Dragons are in uh, Minneapolis for the Super Bowl. Doesn't that fucking suck? That's a little... It's a little it hurts. And it, if I do anything with them, I'm going to pivot... And there's, there's no fucking shortage of things that you can do with Imagine Dragons. Those guys are fucking hit makers. <laughs> but I I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try to lay some groundwork 
for our future project. What we wanted to do was we wanted to make like a two-hour documentary on Thunder. And we were looking at their fucking tour dates. And they were in like Japan. And we were like, how much would it be to fly to Japan? We can just fucking <laughs> fly to Japan. Because how awesome would that be? And we could get like a bunch of celebrities. We'd get Randy. Do just like a serious fucking documentary on Thunder. That would be so fucking I know. Fun. I still want to do it. Yeah. But we still should. I mean, we decided Thunder's not ending. <laughs> Uh, today's episode is also brought to you by RX Bar. Uh, you oh, have I had should a be doing great, this one. Yeah, you've had a great experience with RX Bar, haven't wait, you? Wait, there's no promo code. It's I think it's brunch. We're gonna just, right. we're gonna try to make it brunch off the dome. Do uh, you mind if I take this one? Uh, yeah. Today's episode is brought to you by RX Bar. Feeling frumpy? Have bad posture? It's probably because you're fat. Lose weight. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. And. Uh, how am I doing it? I'm doing uh, what I call the PNP plan, which is paleo plus peanuts. I'm allergic to tree nuts, but I'm not allergic to peanuts. Peanuts are not paleo. So I'm just kind of racing. It'll be our little secret. I'm doing a little cheating thing. But when you're on the go, what are you going to eat? In between places, running around, working too many jobs, trying to support the kids, have a social life? I don't have any of those things. But if I'm on the go, running late to a podcast... I grab an RX bar. RX bars are made with very few simple ingredients, and it says right on it what's going on. That's the on. best part. It shows you exactly what's in the bar right it on the package. It says what you're putting in your body. And here's a little trick with uh, bars like this. They're all just dates. Apparently, <laughs> dates is like this fucking thing that you can turn you can turn peanuts and salt into like ice cream if you just add dates, uh, dates which is crazy let me uh let me give you a few little quick little rundown points about uh rx bar yeah uh gluten-free soy-free dairy-free 11 flavors it's problematic for us we like the soy we like <laughs> the soy soy. Boys. uh no added sugar no artificial colors artificial flavors preservatives or fillers uh there's protein and it comes from egg whites yes so and uh i i've been doing a lot of eggs of late but I'm worried when I eat stuff with eggs because I already did my eggs. Here's what I do in the morning. I do two eggs and then dump some egg whites into it, mix it, and get them big eggs, big scrambled eggs. I do scrambled eggs now. I'm a fucking child. I might as well be having chocolate milk, which I could do with some dates, and it would be just like chocolate milk. Uh, my personal favorite for the RX bar is the uh, peanut butter. Ooh. I also love the peanut butter chocolate. In fact... They sent us some RX bars. They did. And I saw some in the store, and I was like, oh, let me grab one of you these. You bought them? And yeah, wow. I'm supporting the brand. And wow. That's a, I then a give and take relationship yes. that we've got going yeah, on. Yeah, you scratch my back, I'll yeah. give you a little, a little <laughs> masturbate yourself. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, so I sent an email to our rep, and I was like, yo, send me a box of these <laughs> things. And I said. My favorite for sure is the, uh, the chocolate sea salt. So this is a cool thing. You get to have all the other ones. Yeah, I know, because you can't eat any of them yeah. except for the, the peanut butter ones. And when they sent us these, I was like, oh, fuck, you're going to have to do the reads because I'm allergic to all these. And then I saw there were two flavors to which I'm not allergic. And honestly, they have fucking saved my life. My like on-the-go thing, my meal replacement is either a bag of plantain chips, which is like not healthy, but it's technically paleo, or an RX bar, which is healthy. And these things... It's a, it's a, it's one bar. A Snickers doesn't fucking get me anywhere. I'm hungry a minute later. An RX bar. I missed a fucking meal and I went to the movies the other day, and I brought, I put a couple RX bars in my pocket. I watched a fucking two and a half hour movie, and an RX bar lasted me the whole time. Which I am a fucking fet the boy. So <laughs> I need my fucking food, and especially now that I'm not eating a lot of stuff. That fucking lasted me like hours, and you you eat it slowly. You don't like scarf it down. They're kind of like heavy. Yeah, it's which is it, it makes it last. It's I think it's the the dates. I guess are really dense. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that's I love talking of saying when you say dense. I, when you're I say, about I've food, said dense a lot with food? recently. Uh, uh, food and body types. Ooh, did you call me dense? No, not you. Uh, but. Yeah, RX bar. We can, uh, can't, dick, can't, boy. can't speak no. highly enough about it. No, I don't. Uh, to uh, get your special offer, go to 
Uh, 25% off is a special offer, by the way. You can get I'm 25% off? These are not expensive anyway. I That's know. the craziest part. 25% off your first order. Go to rxbar.com slash brunch and then enter promo code brunch at checkout. And 25% off your first order. That's you can, wild. You can, get, like, you can get a deal. I'm you can about steal. to do that. Man, Like I'm telling you, uh, the, the P&P diet is expensive because you're buying... A lot of stuff that doesn't have, like, shit in it. I was talking to, to a kid at my gym the other day, uh, and he was saying that, like, he he's buying, like, almonds or something. Mm-hmm. And he says he drops, like, $20 on almonds, like, every couple days. Or walnuts, I think it was. Mm. He was like, walnuts are terrible, and they're expensive. Walnuts and I hate good. this. I fucking miss them. So. That's what's worse. I'm not a fucking blind person who was born blind. With these right, you, nut allergies, I could see, motherfucker. You know what you're missing. Yeah. Walnuts are fucking good. And when, like when I see an ice cream flavor that's got some walnuts in it, I'm like, fuck, man, walnuts. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, try out uh, our X bar. Good Isn't that us. crazy, though? Like, good there's for us not, that we have uh, sponsors now. Yeah. There's not a lot of things like that, though. That It's it's expensive. Right. Limited options if, you're, and if you have that kind if of you diet. Have that diet, if you have allergies... Maybe that's why I'm scratching. I I was honestly going down a fucking list with your girlfriend last night of she was like, "Well, why are you scratching?" Cuz I hadn't told you I was scratching. And I was like, "Yeah. I got to get this off my chest. I'm just fucking scratching and I'm going to lose my mind." And she was like, "Well, uh, could it be the cold weather?" And I was like, "I've never experienced this in the cold weather." She was like, "Well, what are you stressed about?" And that's why I stayed up till 6:30 because then <laughs> like 4 hours oh, no. of being uh, like, "Well, this, 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 this. The 6.30 uh, therapy L- session. Listing <laughs> of what I'm stressed about. And then uh, added at the end of it, uh, also just my normal, <laughs> normal <laughs> yeah, life. Uh, one, my name is DJ Bean. Yes. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get your own podcast. Listen to the fucking podcast <laughs> one time for me. Um, so, yeah. Uh, RX Bar. Great. Uh, I would say. Like 14 minute ad reads. I would <laughs> say let's talk about. Um, about. Crashing now, and let's talk about high maintenance because both those things are back. Uh, but I don't want to do it too much because I like the idea of this episode being a uh, RX bar episode. a little a little uh, uh, an argument and two ad reads. But that wasn't an argument. Did you no. think it was cool that we didn't argue there? What would we argue about? I don't know. Like I, I had fucking concerns. I thought that. I mean, you were mad again uh, of late. I told you. I told you before we even got on this podcast. Yeah. Now I'm getting mad because yeah. I, I laid it out. But yeah. like I told you at the start, I was like, "Let's just have ten minutes, air our grievances, and yeah. then be done with it. Yeah. Wipe the slate clean. We're moving forward." Yeah, I'll. I'll never really be mad at you. Mm, we'll see. The only thing <laughs> I the the only things I've been. Uh, I've been mad at myself, and the, the, it's happened two times in the history of this podcast. It happened last winter. There was even a part, I think, of the Wine Actually podcast that we cut out at the end. Yeah, uh, there was, yeah. Because, but that was also like three hours into it, right? Like, and it, we were it was wasted. For time. <laughs> yeah. It was for time purposes. It really wasn't that interesting. But uh, I, was, I, I was just like uh, – I was in a bad place, and I – would honestly not want to do brunch because I didn't want to do anything. And I got, and that made me so fucking upset. And it made me wonder, it made me feel bad that like I was letting you down. I was still doing episodes and everything, and I was still coming in and trying to be funny and all that stuff. And wine actually, I think, is our funniest episode. It is. Um, but it was like the most, that and uh, for like a fucking like five month period, for like a few months ago. Where I would like, I, I started doing the things where I wouldn't text on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. That wasn't like a, that wasn't like a fun phone thing. That was just like a, I was so miserable with everything that I didn't want to talk to anybody ever. And for like the first time ever, we would not have like an every day we're sending each other ideas back and forth and everything. And I felt so fucking stressed out that I was like. Again, not like letting you down or whatever, but I was like, I'm being the reason that right now Pete and I aren't talking a lot. So, I don't know. Like, when when we, when we were combative the last, like, I don't know, a couple months or whatever, and it was very, very few and far between, I was like, this is my fault because I probably uh, let distance set in or whatever. But, again, I'll never be mad at you. I'll only be mad at myself for the way I am towards you. <laughs> it's good to know. Yeah. Uh, there was a there was a brunch reference on uh, on 
crashing last night. Yes. Was there? Sit pee. Oh, yeah. He yeah. did a sit pee. Oh, my God. That was... I couldn't believe that I laughed at that scene because... It was so uncomfortable. It was so uncomfortable. Like the so uh, Pete Holmes woke up like the morning after uh, basically his first ever hookup because he had yeah. only been with one woman and he had like a drunk hookup with this girl. Uh, and then the next morning, I, I I had a problem with it because I was like nobody could be this bad. Nobody could be this bad. Yeah, like, but I, know I think Pete Holmes, he could. <laughs> I, I know, like I know, Pete Holmes is like this wholesome. Yeah. Like at that point in his life, it was just like this wholesome, uh, religious, yeah. kind of guy. So like, if there's anybody that could do it, it would be him. But it wouldn't be that bad. Like it was definitely exaggerated for the sake of being funny on TV. Right. But it was it was so so uncomfortable. Yeah, it was like how could anybody be this bad? It was like well, it was like, and I don't want to make this r- reference because. Uh, it was like as virgin behavior as oh, somebody yeah. could be, but uh, but even like even but I don't like, like when people say that because it's also like saying like oh that's gay behavior because like who exhibits more virgin or gay behavior than the two of us? <laughs> True, uh, but like the it, but even like it was like you don't even need to be uh, sexually experienced to do to know some of the things that he did wrong. Like he peed sitting down with the door open, <laughs> <laughs> peed sitting down with the door open on a, after a hookup. Right. There's no way that you could ever think that would be like cool. I was so I guess I was just made more uncomfortable by the fact that after he was like that was really special yeah. and i was like, ah, <laughs> like come on man like see that i could understand more of like a he, you've never been here kind yeah, of yeah, thing yeah, so yeah, like yeah. this it was for sure special for him yeah for her she was mm. but also the fact that like he stuck around the entire next day that, <laughs> was... me, that he stayed and made baked zd and made me laugh out loud <laughs> at like two in the morning so fucking hard. Yeah, the fact that he's he he like made a he he did like a a, a full on meal yeah. at he somebody else's house. <laughs> yes. He fucking like checked out what was on the tube. Yeah. And like ate out of the pan. Yeah. Like very gluttonous yeah. very like hey you should do this that's only no- in the privacy of your totally, own home like, like you know you're promised that your roommate is not going to be there <laughs> nobody else is going to fucking see this shit and her roommate comes in and she's like so are you uh such and such as boyfriend <laughs> and he's like well i've actually been wondering that <laughs> so he was like hey take a seat <laughs> i was laughing so hard at that which Oh my god, that was so funny! It was a it was a good episode. I, crashing, I've gone from the feeling about crashing the way I feel about Lady Bird, which is really good. We're way overrating yeah. it, but really good. To crashing is the most important show on television. <laughs> it was yesterday's episode was really really good, and I've since come around on uh, the Leaf character being good and important to the show. I started to write down the note as soon as Leaf came in in that episode of. We don't like Leaf, right? And then after a minute, I was like, oh, Leaf's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, I thought that heading into this season, I was like, I definitely don't need Leaf in this season. Yes. Because, like, the the wife isn't in it anymore. Yeah. So it's like, why are you keeping that guy around when right. it's clear that, like, Pete doesn't like him? Right. But now he's serving, like, a valuable service to Pete, and he is, like, actually funny. And how unbelievably difficult a role is that to make not fucking lame? Like, right. how many times did like they... over the top th- Like, the, the, the holistic person, yeah. the hippie person, uh, fucking uh, uh, Kumail in Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's so fucking painful. Yeah, right. If you do it bad, it's so cringeworthy. It's, I feel like if you do it normal, it's cringeworthy. Right. Just because the joke's been don't made do it so great. many... Fu- right. Yeah, right. yeah, right. Like, you can't... There's no, like, passable level of doing that, you know? You can't just be like, all right, then we'll have a hippie guy, or we'll have a super holistic guy, or we'll have a masseuse or a masseur come in. And that's not to lump them all in the same category, but it fucking is. It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just, you're always like, oh, well, let me guess. They're going to say some hippy-dippy stuff that we don't usually <laughs> say. But he he was great. He had his scene The scene with, with Wale, Wale was unbelievable. <laughs> It was so good. I saw and, so many things with my eyes in the last 24 hours that were just really fucking pleasing to me. Uh, the Stefan Gilmore bra- oh past breakup. Oh, my God. My Italian fucking chef d- kissing fingers on repeat for 24 hours. Yes. I, 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 I've never seen 
uh, a defensive back knock away a ball like that where he like uh, caught the the oof. corner of it yeah. and just like threw it to the side. Yes. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. <laughs> it's like this ball has to go somewhere else. And yes. like he like yeah. he had to let out like And he was little, floating like, in the cr- air for like nineteen seconds. That and uh I was saying to someone recently, I, you know how I feel about sports fans who are just like fucking too into it. I'm glad you're too into it. Just not for me. <laughs> um, like I, I'm obviously too into a lot of stuff. I'm too into music. I'm too into Pete. Whatever. Uh, but uh, the Patriots have a lot of players who, a lot of football players who I really like. Like, yeah. like players who I love fucking watch play. When... Patriots, uh, when the, Deion Lewis fumbles, Jacksonville gets the ball back. They're going to fucking win. And they go three and out because on third down, Bortles hits Alan Hearns. He's going for the first down. And fuck it. I love watching Devin McCourty tackle somebody. I, that and tackle was fucking fan, that ta- was unbelievable. Like, you go no yeah. further. I was like, oh, my fucking God. That I tackle could watch was Devin like, McCourty like, tackle oh, my all God. Day. That was He's such like a great into game. A truck. <laughs> that was such a great game. And it was. Everybody was like, "Oh, Jacksonville's gonna suck." There's a tomato can, blah blah. And the Patriots had to be fucked. Like after the game, you have to do the whole like. Uh, so, what do you like about the offense? What didn't you like about that performance? Who needs to be better? And it's like, I'd like Brandon Cooks to play to catch that one ball. <laughs> But Tom Brady was fucking awesome, and he had to be because Jacksonville was never perfect, not awesome. They played a f- perfect for his – that's not true. They were they were not good in the uh, in the second half. Jacksonville? Yeah. Yeah, well, the Patriots were better. Right. But, but they're going to be. Right. It's, I mean, Jacksonville played a perfect first half. Yeah. And the fact that like it was like the third quarter, and I was like, they're not increase, increasing their lead to like 24 to 30 points right, right. now. They're going to lose. <laughs> I would have liked for them to go for it on fourth down when they were trying to throw funny looks at them. And uh, and Tony Romo was like, I'm not sure what this is. Time, time out. out. Time, <laughs> out. Time, <laughs> out. time <laughs> out. Time he out. He kept like, screaming time out. And I was like, wait, did they call a time out yet or no? Like, right. Like, I'm, I'm confused. I, Tony Romo doesn't really understand his job yet. <laughs> Who's someone that you were initially so wrong on? <laughs> and you were like, eh. <laughs> Like to have that one back. Like uh, I think X Ambassadors might be it for me. <laughs> I heard like the first two X Ambassadors songs, and I was like, "Oh, these guys are fucking heat." And I then remember I got that. I was like, "Oh, they're they're too much." I remember that you asked me to go to an X Ambassadors. I tried to get. I was going to a free Boston. X Ambassadors yeah. concert. It was free. That was the big yeah. selling point. And but the, the concert was made me realize. I was like, "Oh, they're that's why lame. it's free." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're they're Imagine Dragons level. Yeah, like, but worse. Yeah, Imagine Dragons. <laughs> I fucking like American Dragons. God. I was helping uh, Bry Guy do some work on his house, which was a hilarious choice by Bry Guy. And uh, yeah, you had to be like the eighth person on that list. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he just put on the Imagine Dragons album, and he was like, "Is it cool if I just play this album?" I was like, "What do you think you were gonna say?" It's cool if you don't have the repeat button pressed because I don't want to hear anything else after this shit. <laughs> Keep it going. Um, but yeah, they, they, there are some things that like. Right off the bat, you're like, wow, this is really cool. This yeah. is awesome. And then you're like, I hope everyone doesn't remember <laughs> yeah. I said yeah, I can't that. remember a specific one off the top of my head, but there's been for sure. The big one things. for me growing up was uh, Nine Days. Do you remember that band? No. Story of a Girl. Oh, yeah. yeah. That song came out, and I was fucking all over <laughs> it. it. That, oh, all over it. They did the, the fucking, that last chorus, when they do a little syncopated thing, they do the, this is the story of a girl who cried yeah, yeah. and oh man just all of it got me and i was like i was doing like jam though i was doing like fucking paul revere down the streets <laughs> like check out nine day nine days they're so good and then everyone heard it and they were like oh my god dude that's fucking embarrassing and i was that's, like that I'm just, song is a jam though. and it was it was of i was of the age where yeah. i had to be like you oh i don't like it it's go oh, yeah <laughs> oh this 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 song is gay <laughs> yeah i don't, don't like it fucking kids. we all have those ones though but yeah wale on uh, crashing was i was not expecting that whatsoever mm. uh i wonder like how that happened and he was good he was great that was like real and Le- leaf was so great with him um uh like there was a good message sent there yeah. like 
It was it was a great scene, great episode. Another thing that I watched last night whilst mm. itching, uh, his Pete Holmes is stand up. Did you? Yeah, his special. I've done such a fucking one eighty on. Do you Pete like Holmes. him now? He is a shit interviewer, but you're not supposed to be good at everything. And when you watch him do comedy, holy smokes, do you root for him because. He, he's having such a good time. He just wants to be having a good time. And you can tell, again, this is my little depression, Dar. That guy's not totally happy. And no. he just wants, but he's he wants to be there to make people happy. And uh, in, a, in a way more kind of uh, a million times more uh, good person slash sweet person slash innocent person thing i see a little bit of myself in him i think if like there's if there's like a person that you root for in comedy it's it's a guy like him yeah who's like doing it because he just wants to make people happy right and like he's trying to be a good person yeah and it's it's it, you can tell that he has some internal struggle but like yeah. he's probably at his root probably like the best person in comedy yeah maybe he's oh my nothing's gonna come out ag- about uh, him <laughs> god i hope not that but, guy has touched Every breast and vagina the right way. <laughs> well, like the first episode of the season, he he like asked about he, like when he was about to have sex. He was like, "Are you sure you want to do this?" Like I for sure see that. that oh being yeah, a Pete yeah, Holm right. things. Yeah, Pete Holm things. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I mean, do you know like, if there's an app? Someone was telling me this. Colleges do uh, an app where you say you like check a box or sign it or something saying that you're consenting before you have sex what yeah it's this this might sound problematic that's a uh good idea for a lot of reasons like so like two people before they hook up like they check this box and yeah. it like, goes on record that they were both that night were like yeah what we're consenting to this yeah it's, yeah i think that also presents an issue where like you're allowed to change your mind after that what Oh, or like if it's yeah, if like bad shit, yeah. Right. If, if like, you're allowed if like to they're be, too uh, aggressive, if there's you're... N- there's no point, there's no like point of no return when it comes to sex. Totally. Like you can always be like, no, I'm not feeling this. I'm I'm done. I don't know any statistics, statistics or anything, but I feel like a good amount of sexual assault probably occurs during sex. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So like, I I have an issue with like somebody referring back to that being like, no, look, we were both consensual. Yeah. We both checked this box. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Uh, my bigger thing is if anyone, if anyone is like, if anyone uh, accused me of having sex with them, I'd be like, no, I fucking didn't. Shut up. <laughs> That's a you thing no? for sure. That's a you thing. Fortunately, no one can do that. Yeah, nobody's, <laughs> nobody's ever accused you yep, of having sex with nope. them. Nope. Uh, yeah. Did you watch High Maintenance? I did. And Speaking of sex, yeah, a lot of it in that episode. Yeah, I. Uh, Maybe it was because I was itching so much. Maybe it was because I just haven't. I've slept like one hour in in the last however many days. Um, I got teary eyed at the end of High Maintenance. Oh really? Yeah, the scene on the the, the train. subway. The, oh yeah. my god, that was such a good scene. That whole episode was great, and it was totally different from the first season. Yeah, it it was like more uh, all over the place. It was like an anthology series in one episode. In one episode, yeah, yeah it bounced around from like that's so. If you don't watch that show, everybody, that show is. Awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, it really was great. And uh, you know what it was? It was kind of like the... Uh, you watch the webisodes, right? Yeah. The web series. Like, those are like three to four minute, five minute, six minute yeah. stories uh, about like people in the city. This was like 30 minutes of that. Right. Where it just they, kept bouncing around. But they just do it Birdman style where like they'll keep the shot in. So like the, the guy who's losing weight, um, mm-hmm. he eventually binge eats. And he's at a restaurant. I felt so bad. They, dude. I felt so bad. Like he, he, I went from fucking despising that guy to feeling despair for him in one second. Because So the episode is uh, he's losing – he's lost a lot of weight. He hits 275 pounds for the first time since high school. He's an adult man. He's very excited about it. And, uh, he's a, very committed to a healthy lifestyle. Yes. A major tragedy – uh, befalls the world, and they don't specify what it is. But the episode is about everyone very Trumpian. reacting to it. Yeah, and every and like the whole city. It's New York. The whole city's very upset, and it's a lot of people holding signs like saying like "Be good to one another." Um, a lot of people not going outside. A lot of crying, and he keeps starting to post on Instagram like, like "Hit I'm my pro- goal." Like I'm proud of myself. Yeah, 
But then he sees like other people are sad yeah. and he feels bad. He feels guilty about like feeling a personal joy yeah. and like personal uh, accomplishment while like bad so shit feel is about going that? on. It sounds like you didn't hate him as much as I did. No, like I have, I can kind of I can kind of understand that. Yeah. Like I feel like I've had moments well, it's like that. Be a huge deal for him, right? Yeah, and yeah. like th- like just because like there's so much like shit that is not related to him like he he doesn't own like, he shouldn't feel guilty about like what's going on around him yeah so like i so like i felt bad that he couldn't feel like his own sense of accomplishment and own sense of joy just because like sh- bad shit was going on around him that he had nothing to do with here's what he does uh you put your thumb over the camera take a picture for your story you ever do that trick where it's just a black screen. Makes it black. Yeah. Write whatever you want. And then you write on it, uh, this one. This one's kind of heavy, so hold. You know, you hold it so you can read it. Yeah. And write, like, today could have been so many things. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I have been struggling with weight my entire life, blah, blah, blah. Today should have been today could be the day that i celebrate that i'm that i have got down to 275 pounds instead today was the most painful reminder that i'm just one person be good uh, to each other something like that mm, i'm uh that's a good it's a good move i'm kind you of experienced be a, be a pr person yeah I'm kind of experienced in being vain and uh depressed so you True. can kind of meld them both together. Uh, quick, uh, and people the... will say uh, you're brave and don't let anything diminish how you feel. Wow! And then wow. You, you kind of make them give you those. Speaking of PR, we got to give a quick little shout out to uh, Zach Efron. Did not tweet anything about himself on oh, Martin Luther King huge, Day this year. Huge. Big step for Zach yeah. Efron. Yeah, that was. Uh, we check with each other before we send stuff o- over the brunch account. So there was some texting of like. On Martin Luther King Day, we're like, we're going to text something about Efron, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> uh, high maintenance. Also, uh, my one note that I put down, a uh, lot of full frontal nudity, male nudity in this episode. A yes. lot of peen. Yes. A lot um, of soft, flaccid peen. R- which, quite frankly, felt good because they showed uh, they showed normal penis uh, from one of the guys. They just showed like normal sized penis, and I was like, Thank after, you. After, uh, after, after uh, what, was what was it? it? Uh, a love? No, no, no. no, it was, no, no, uh, no um, easy. Easy. It, easy with they the biggest floppy the fucking dick in the world. flaccid dick I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, fuck, is that supposed to be what a dick is like? <laughs> they also, they do that a lot. They also did that with Big Little Lies. Mm. Alexander Skarsgård, massive hog. Yeah. Like, that had to be a prosthetic. Mm. I don't like that. Um, but uh, are, I don't think are you allowed to to show like a hard dick? I don't think I've ever seen a hard dick like outside of porn Fuck. on like a TV show. Trump was elected. You're allowed to do anything. Uh, real quick, uh, I should mention I put in work this weekend for the podcast. Oscars. I saw um, three movies. I saw Wind River. At your recommendation? You're an idiot. For I not watched it with it. my mom, and we both loved it. Yeah, I you texted me. I, this is gonna sound like I'm mad at you, but like hey, you, te- you, you texted me over the weekend, you were like, "I'm a little upset that you didn't push me harder to watch Wind River." I was like, "Bitch, what the fuck are you talking about? I've literally talked nonstop about Wind River since I've seen it." Well, being like it was me- one of my favorite movies of the year. But, well, my you got to think of it from my perspective. You told me to watch it, and I didn't end up watching it. Whose fault is that? You didn't tell me en- hard enough. I would. You say. should take. I. I would argue that you should take, take my some initiative. Rec- you would. T- you should take my recommendation seriously. Mm. I also saw. Um, I also saw The Shape of Water, mm-hmm. which I loved. Was okay. great, and I saw Call Me by Your Name, which very surprising for me. Uh, just okay for me, dog. Ooh. But uh, you're going to see both those because we're going to have. I don't know when. The they might Oscars, come out today. I, th- I think they are uh, announced this week at some okay. point. The when nominees. they come out, we're going to have a movie review episode for every uh, Best Picture nom, including Get Out. Like We'll go back and do an official one because, I don't know, I think that that's the, the right thing we to do. We should do it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to try to see. Oh, I saw, I saw The Post. Oh. Uh, last week. I'm not interested in that. That movie <laughs> fucking sucked. I, I, I don't know if it sucks. Uh, I would say that you're maybe over-exaggerating. Are no. you over-exaggerating? No. It sucks. It sucks. I was sitting there fucking 
watching Tom Hanks, Meryl Streep, and Steven Spielberg, and Jesse Plemons, and Zach Woods in a serious role, which is like everything I want, and I'm just sitting there just fucking stewing, itching, everything. It was awful. Oh, no. Yeah. It was not a good movie. It was. It's such an interesting story, right. but it, they just told it in such a boring an way. An interesting story does not necessarily mean it's an interesting movie. But you would think that fucking Steven Spielberg. I know. The fucking best. They got heavy actors, hitters. Right. Like, I'm, I was watching it. I was like, what else do you fuckers need? <laughs> like, do you need to bring in Denzel? Is that like, do you additionally need Denzel fucking, um, oh, what was I going to say? Uh, the acting in Shape of Water rules. Like I heard I want that the all uh, those people nominated. Yeah, I heard. Uh, I forget what's her name. The uh, the main the woman who plays I don't know it. who she is. Yeah, I heard that she was phenomenal. She was great. Um, Speaking of actors uh, uh, awards, I hope that uh, that guy Timothy Shalab, whatever from uh, Call Me by Your Name. Yeah, everybody's everybody's begging for him to win Best Supporting Actor. I hope he doesn't win. Yeah. It's, it's the uh, no means no. Yeah, yeah. What was that? Uh, get out. Because I no, said no, so. uh, no. Uh, uh, the big sick. The big sick. Because I, I said so. I'm, needs to still exist. Yes. Um, no, everybody's so up in arms that who, he's not who winning. Who does he play? Uh, the supporting actor, the guy opposite Army Hammer. The kid. Yeah. Uh, he was really Shala good. I met or whatever. It as is. I was watching that, I was like, Miles. Miles Teller. Watch. Stay on top of your fucking game, Ooh. because Timothy Chalamet. You're gonna be you're gonna be fighting for roles pretty soon. That that kid's gonna be a fucking star. He was. He that's. Was awesome. I mean, that's what everybody's saying, and they're like, I cannot believe that he's winning. Like he lost. Uh, he lost the the Golden Globe and uh, and the SAG Award. Good. To Gary people, Oldman. Most of the people lose. <laughs> right. A good majority of you are going to lose if you're nominated. Um, but I, people are pissed. And now I'm seeing that people are pissed. And because I have, it's probably because I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know how good he was yet. No. But now up. I'm like, yes, this is great. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm eager for you to see Call Me By Your Name because there are a lot of great parts of it. Uh, you're left with some questions. You're also left with some questions with The Shape of Water. But uh, a big one, a big takeaway for me with Shape of Water, uh, and we'll get into it for the episode. Uh, what's his name? Michael, Michael Michael Shannon Michael Shannon Michael Shannon is just actually you said he was hot I said he was hot but then I saw something something and now I have the hiccups what the fuck uh, I saw something with him it caught my eye and mm-hmm. I was like hmm, we're gonna have to talk about this as well are we saving it for the review or yeah we're okay. saving it uh, good episode good episode this was a good episode it was a needed episode. I'm, I feel better. Yeah, because I, no, honestly, I was like, I, I texted you this morning. I was like, I was honestly going to ask you to grab a beer at some point, which I can't do because I'm doing the fucking paleo thing. But I just want to make sure like everything is okay because we're. Uh, you guys will find out at some point in our lives we're gonna take over the fucking world. And I was like, I just I don't know. I I just want to make sure that we were, that, were Gucci that we were Gucci and we are we end every episode with a uh, hug and a kiss so we're gonna do that now goodbye.